this extreme temperature differences because uh, you're, I'm assuming you're still based in Finland and I'm in Texas where it's usually hot. Okay, so uh, is it cold now or? Uh, not so much. I mean, right now it's only like in the 50s, so it's it's hardly nothing at all. Okay, okay. I think when we toured with, with Baron Earth uh, in 2010, uh, there was some kind of icy situation, uh, but it yeah. can, can change now. there. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often, but every now and then we'll get some, a little bit of, you know, sleet or ice or something like that. Okay, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We had some trouble of uh, with stay, staying on the road with the bus <laughs> back then, but uh, yeah, in Finland it's snowing all the time currently, so. Yeah, it's scary in those type of situations because I, I work for the fire department, so I drive a fire truck. And last year we actually had a freeze to where, I mean, it was slick on the road. So I'm yeah. like driving a fire truck and it's just like sliding all over the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We saw many accidents there. Uh, yeah, it's because we don't know how to drive in that condition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten used to it in Finland, so. Yeah. So anyway, what's important for today is, of course, I mean, you play bass in Amorphous. You have a, an amazing new album coming out. Uh, Thank in you. About three weeks, uh, February 11th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, amazing. Titled Halo. Is there a specific reason y'all went for the title of Halo this time? <clears throat> well, it was a title of one song, so uh, we kind of had to make the selection from the song list, <laughs> but but still it uh, like uh, matched with the uh, album cover pretty pretty well because there is sun and uh, moon and it's kind of circle of life, uh, which uh, is uh, sort of a theme in the in the album cover, life and death and so on. So uh, it it's like fits fits the uh, album title and uh, the theme quite well. Yeah. So, I mean, Amorphous has always had amazing album covers, uh, and I was just thinking about that as, as you were, you know, talking about the, the new album cover. Have you had fans come up to you and show you, like, maybe they had, like, the album cover tattooed on themselves? Uh, well, at least I've seen those um, um, anchors, if you know from Tales from yeah. the Thousand Legs. It's called yeah. Ukon Kirves. I've seen pl plenty of those. Um, and I guess there there has been uh, uh, at least in Instagram yeah. uh, plenty of um, amorphous ornaments that you'd yeah uh, for the fans. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a kind of a dedication. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Now for this writing process on this album, when did it actually begin? Because I know other bands because of COVID, they weren't able to release the music that they had for at least over a year. Was yeah. that, the, that happened this time around also for Amorphous or did y'all write during like 2020 and 2021? Well, it's hard to say because I don't know how Esa and Santari works because they are the main songwriters currently in the band. But uh, I know to, one song by Tommy Koivusari, the guitar player, is, a, is an old song. Uh, um, My Name is Night, which, which is the last song, song of the album. So. Uh, uh, but it's like uh, newly arranged uh, for this album, so uh, that's the old, that's an old one. And Santeri told once that he always starts to work on, from the scratch uh, for the album, like a couple of months before the the uh, before the period where we start to, to start to share demos to the tribe. Yeah, uh, I don't know about Esa. I think I think he's probably composing all the time and uh, then presenting the best songs <laughs> he yeah. has on the on the trover. Yeah, well, I'm sure yeah. as a music, it's, it's not like you can just shut that part of you off of creating music. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least I am like constantly working on uh, new material and there might be some uh, like songs from uh, 20 years back, for example, which uh, I can take to completion uh, today, for example. Yeah. So it might take time sometimes. Sometimes it's quicker, but uh, very often it takes time to, to, you have to distance from the song 
for a while and then get back to it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the way it works. I don't know. There, I think Santer is the most professional guy in the band, so uh, he's a kind of composer in a classical sense. So uh, um, he's probably capable of uh, just writing a song. Yeah, very cool. Now, on, on with, once it, uh -huh. yeah. Now, was there any? Uh, did y'all have any issues getting together uh, once you started recording the album? Because I know, again, because of what everything's been going on, like some, you know, each member had to go in by themselves and and record alone. Did did, yeah. did y'all types of issues too? You mean COVID wise or? Yeah. Uh, I think well, in Finland, the situation has been pretty good uh, throughout the epidemic, <laughs> the pandemic or whatever. Um, so we were able to uh, rehearse properly. I think we rehearsed four times a week before the session. So uh, we met each other just like any other year yeah. or so, any, any other day. So it was it was no problem. Okay. But the but the session itself was a little little bit more kinky when it when it came to uh, traveling. We were supposed to go to uh, Sweden to record the album to Jens's Fashion Nation Street Studios, but uh, we couldn't do it because um, there were such um, strict restrictions traveling wise and uh, and uh, which was it was kind of same because shame because um, I know that Jens had a uh, just freshly built new studio where he wanted us to be and uh, it was kind of disappointing for us as well and uh, Jens couldn't even come to Finland uh, during the recordings because uh, he was stopped on the border okay. and uh, he couldn't fly to Helsinki because uh, uh, he didn't have some uh, document or something I don't know how was it but uh, we somehow managed to uh, do the pre-production uh, through email, <laughs> which is kind of a miracle. Um, yeah. But still, uh, it was a easy uh, session for us because uh, we were able to record in Helsinki and we didn't need to travel to Sweden. In that way, it was uh, like, uh, I sort of preferred it myself because uh, the studio is just next to my house. So. Oh, yeah. uh, so it was kind of easy to just go there and uh, do our things and uh, yeah and uh, yeah it, it that in that way it was different kind of session uh, for sure because we didn't work with the producer uh, like we used to but uh, I had a great uh, engineer and producer for basses and uh, other guys worked with uh, another person Nino Lauren. My producer was, uh, um, yeah, whatever. But uh, we had kind of, we had three different guys to work with, uh, with the recordings. So, uh, uh, and then we had a G drive or whatever. We transfer how we trans transfer the files to, uh, yeah, to uh, Jens, and uh, then he, if if he was happy, he just picked up the correct parts but if he, if he wasn't he de demanded us to try again so yeah. uh, that's how it went i don't know we, we just made one uh, main session together with the band we played all the songs to, together in the studio and uh, there we started to build the album afterwards that's that's great now for for this album did y'all happen to want to try anything differently with the recording session, whether uh, was it the sound or, you know, maybe even for yourself, different uh, type of bass techniques, uh, the way you play the bass or different amps or anything differently this time? Uh, well, the main difference was that I was able to use my own own equipment in the studio, uh, which was uh, nice for the, those circumstances, but uh, I think Jens reamped all the bases anyway, so <laughs> there's not, not much left of, of those uh, sounds which I made. Uh, and I actually, with Queen of Time, I uh, used fretless bass, for example, and uh, different kind of effects with bass, but this time it was all straight, just, just 
one cable from base to the amplifier and that was it. Oh, really? that, that, that's how I did it from uh, from the beginning to the end. So uh, it was kind yeah. of a meat and potatoes, if I could say so, <laughs> as, a, as a vegan. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, for something like that, do you, do you find personally that it's easier to be able to write that way instead of like you kind of mentioned, sometimes you have to put the song aside and and let it let it kind of brew a little bit and then come back to it. Did you find it that way? Did it recording this way was made it more pleasant? Uh, well, I don't know. It's a, the studio sessions and the recordings are pretty straightforward for Amorphis. We just have the songs and uh, Jens made makes some changes to arrangements and uh, maybe modulations and stuff like that. Uh, and then he uh, sends us back his requests, which are basically the demos which we should record. <laughs> so uh, that's what we do. We just play the play the songs, and that's it. It's kind of a boring truth, but uh, that's how it is. We don't have much time for experimentations in the studio. We just do our things, and uh, then we. Uh, uh pass it to the next guy but but of course uh this time it was we had a little bit more time with the session uh with queen of time i think we recorded it in one or two months it was relatively quick session but this yeah. took i think six months or something because we oh, had wow. time to, to do it so uh we sort of used it uh they had a little bit more time to think of uh, vocal arrangements, for example, in the, in the uh, studio um, with a vocal produ producer. So, uh, in that sense, it was it was definitely a different kind of session. Yeah. yeah, but then you know, it's it's funny as you're saying that it seems you know pretty meat and potatoes. But you know, for the fans, it's like this is what we want from Amorphous. You know, mm -hmm. you, you've been do you know Amorphous has been around for you know. 32 years about yeah mm -hmm. 90. so this is you know i mean y'all have been able to create your own sound to where i mean it doesn't matter like if if you just put on a song you can instantly recognize yeah. them yeah yeah it's a um it's kind of a it's we don't need to do the experimentation anymore right. because we did it already during the 90s in the beginning yeah. of the band during the say four first albums we did lots of experimentation and sort of found our own uh, direction uh yeah sometimes i feel that it would be nice to gather with the guys and just jam and try new things but uh it's still um uh yeah we are working this this is what we do for for a living so uh we have a recording sessions and then we have a touring cycle we don't have too much time to uh spend in the rehearsing place anymore because we have families and so on so uh it's kind of a different situation nowadays okay. but uh but of course the band has changed during the last 20 years for for example, because uh, first of all, Tommy came for the vocals to the band, and Pat and, and Amorphis took a couple steps back to uh, to the uh, death metal roots. They brought back in uh, the crawling vocals, for example, and mm -hmm. uh, the music was a little bit little bit different, kind of a gothic metal uh, at that point. But with um, Circle album, they started to get back to harsher metal again and uh, with Jens if you compare Jens's album you can say for sure that they are different from uh, the previous uh, uh, back catalog of Amorphis so uh, we are kind of evolving still all the time yeah. but it's different way it's more of a production wise than experimenting with music yeah and and, and it's do you find it strange to think that you've been, you know, uh, other than, you know, you've been gone for a few years, but I mean, you've mostly been in Morpha since the beginning. Do you find it strange thinking back, you know, of way back when, when you first started to where, 
you're at now that you're still happily able to do this? <laughs> yeah, because uh, we didn't. Uh, uh, it kind of happened accidentally. <laughs> uh, amorphous uh, success or whatever you call it, a breakthrough. Yeah. Because uh, we didn't have any plans of uh, playing big stages or whatever. We just dreamt of uh, playing in uh, local underground slots and uh, uh, youth houses and so on. That was our main goal <laughs> at yeah. the time. But uh, but it evolved quite big, quite uh, quick at some point because uh, we got a record deal from Real After Records and. Uh, uh, then we started to take it a little bit more seriously, uh, just li just a little bit, <laughs> because we were just like uh, uh, we didn't uh, we we were a very professional band during the nineties, when it comes to live perf performances and stuff like that. Uh, I think we messed up a little bit, like like too too many opportunities. Uh, in that department, <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of amazing. Uh, I wouldn't ever dreamed of uh, doing this uh, after thirty years uh, when yeah. we started. When we when we started at the first place, we are sort of a yeah. I don't know. I thought that we were the the average of. Uh, uh, band um, cycle is usually like four years or something like that. That's what I thought of how how was going to happen with Amorphis, but uh, yeah, it's amazing how it goes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Here you are a few decades later. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> which yeah, is which and, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but of course it's like uh, time runs fast as well, especially now. Oh, when, yeah. when you get older, so uh, it's like I've been five years in a band again, so it's like uh, it felt like uh, I came in back like yesterday, so it's uh, also a little bit concerning <laughs> that <laughs> life life goes so fast. <laughs> oh yes, and, and we got to do everything we can to cram in as much as possible in that. Short yeah, time. yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, for you know, any maybe young bands that may be listening to this, you know, what is something that you may have learned, you know, during this time being a band to where, you know, made you get to this level? I mean, is there like, I mean, just determination? I mean, was it uh, just not, not giving up in, in what you wanted to do? Uh, because there are some bands, like you mentioned, it's like some bands have like a short lifespan of uh, four years, three years, whatever, and then that's it, they're done. It's like, for some reason, they're not able to find that thing that's able to push them a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think uh, there should be some sort of originality, uh, and it comes from playing music from the heart and uh, doing what you like and not uh, following any trends or stuff like that. But uh, yeah, uh, the main main key for the success in the first place, I think it's uh, trying to do your own thing and uh, not copying other bands. Yeah. But then com comes in the de determination, as you said. Uh, and fortunately, we had a couple guys in the band who were determined enough to uh, keep on pushing Amorphis forward, even through through the hard times, which we had in the end of the 90s. Uh, I wasn't able to do that myself, but uh, ESA and Tommy uh, wanted to push on, and uh, we should be grateful for them for doing that. So, uh, um, yeah, I think that's in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. And of course, learn how to play your instrument and uh, <laughs> make good music. <laughs> yeah, sure. And it's and it's I, I find it interesting that you mentioned that you know the the playing from the heart and being original. When I've talked to other, you know, bands and stuff like that, that's usually that seemed to been to where that was one of the main things that, you know, when they play something that's honest for themselves, the fans will follow. Yeah, yeah, 
very easily because they can they can see that that you're honest with the music. So I mean, they'll just come in rows. Yeah, that's right, and that's also a bit of a problem because uh, when you get bigger, uh, there's uh, like a, uh, lots of people giving you uh, like hints what to do, where to take the band, and where you should go and many bands loses themselves at that point because they listen to yeah. other people there are usually like a record label people and uh, produ producers telling what you what to do like you cannot like put this part after this part uh, and then that that that's something which kills kills the uh, experimentation side of, of of the band and uh kills the originality somehow and uh you just have to stay hard yeah yeah for sure and um and do do what you like to do and not listen to other people yeah yes i mean um, yeah for sure i mean being honest with yourself and, and doing what you want because you you have that idea of how you want the music to sound and how yeah how, yeah yeah I, I yeah yeah think. of course and uh yeah, yeah, but yeah, there's plenty of advices from uh, from the uh, field, from professional people <laughs> coming for sure, and it still happens. So, uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you just have to see through that. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're always gonna. There's always gonna be comments and saying that oh, you should have done this and you should have done that. It's like, well, you know, if if you think that, well, why don't you do that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, another exciting thing, you're, you're uh, finally coming back to the United States again in April, which is going to be amazing. You're going to yeah. be here for a month. Yeah. Uh, is this, has it been a while since Amorphous has played live? Yes, it's been a while, but uh, we've been uh, kind of fortunate enough to uh, play plenty of shows in Finland. Uh, at least last summer we played lots of festivals and uh, did some indoor festivals after that during the fall because yeah. uh, as i said situation have been quite good here in finland yeah. so uh, we have this vaccination passport <laughs> or whatever yeah which which makes it a little bit easier uh, uh, to keep it under, under control um, but anyway uh, i think we did our last u.s tour in uh, 2019 when we toured there with uh, Delane in North America. And uh, after that, we went to a European tour with Dimo Borger. And that happened on January and February of 2020. And uh, after that, we were supposed to have our 30th anniversary tour, but soon uh, COVID striked and uh, right. Right. everything everything got canceled. But uh, it's been only two years, so, uh, that's we've had like pretty good luck with that as well because so uh, that was our last tour for Queen of Time, and uh, before it all ended. So uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. I don't know. Uh, of course, there's uncertainty still going on, and uh, it's impossible to say what will happen uh, this year, next year. Who knows? But uh, let's see. Right. We do do our best, and we do every show. Uh, which is possible, and uh, we are constantly booking concerts and tours uh, for Amorphis. So uh, I don't know. We'll try. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah, for sure. I, from what I've noticed, you know, I, I mean, there's so many tours happening here in the U.S. Uh, but I have also noticed that a lot of European tours are being canceled, at least yeah. this big spring, summer, and, the, and they're kind of waiting for the fall. Yeah, it's. Uh, I wondered that as well. That uh, in in the states there are lots of tour go to, tours going on. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It might be that um, uh, keeping up the economy is a little bit more uh, important for yeah. America than for Europe. In <laughs> for some reason, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. So. The restrictions are not that strict as they are here. Yeah. Um, but of course, uh, there's been like I, I know that uh, 
there's been lots of cancellations in in the states as well so uh that's yeah. that's the downside of uh having tours oh yeah uh, but you know i don't know it's impossible to say why how, how would it have been if there has had been tours in europe and uh, when when will it open up it's it's kind of hard to say but uh but i only know that there's been kind, kind of a optimistic predictions uh, about the yeah. situation currently. Yeah. But again, it was the same last year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we I have mean, to prepare ourselves for another disappointment. But uh, of course. I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of cynical still when it comes to it. I was cynical from the beginning. And yeah. I thought it, it will take at least two, four years. Just as the experts told. But uh, yeah, I'm wishing that uh, it's done and dusted for now. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope for the best, man. Yeah. Expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you're also going to be bringing Sylvain and Hoax. Have you played with either band before? No. No. Uh, I didn't actually. I wasn't familiar to either of those bands before, but. Uh, I'm happy that they are there because uh, I found out that they are really good stuff, great yeah. music, and uh, yeah. it's uh, kind of um, exciting to have such different bands compared to Amorphis mm -hmm. this time around because yeah. we've toured with pretty similar bands, at least from the same genre, bands like Dark Tranquility and Moonspell and. Uh, and delaying as well, um, but this time it's going to be a little bit different tour in that way, which is yeah. interest, interesting, I think, oh, yeah. for yeah. the audience as well. Yes, for sure, for sure. I haven't heard, I haven't heard hoax, but I had heard of, I've listened to Sylvain before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Oh yeah, for sure. Now I also did see that uh, on the website the there is bundles for people to purchase. Uh, we also got here. You're going to be having some meet and greets at these show or limited meet and greet at these shows uh, on the bundles. Um, from what I see, you know, there's, of course, limited variations in, in the different colors. Do you yourself also try to pick up those limited colors and vinyls? Are you a collector that way yourself or no? Well, not actually. I just take the artist copies of whatever oh, yeah. issue there is, and I'm not following th that much of the uh, merchandise. Uh, <laughs> myself like what is coming up but uh yeah it, there's great variety of uh of uh merchandise yeah uh, this it makes, time it makes it hard for the fan to pick what they want to buy <laughs> yeah it's gonna be expensive <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah but i'm happy that vinyl is back for good uh oh yeah there was a problem yeah, yeah. so yeah and i heard that cd is like a uh, in a rising trend as well yeah. again so and see cassettes okay. of course yeah i mean you want people you want fans to purchase the physical because when they do the streaming and all that it's like not much of hardly anything of the money goes to the, to support the band yeah that's right that's right and also uh uh if you purchase purchase the uh, album you listen it uh as a whole and you have to cover art and stuff like that. Lyrics, um, yeah. especially the lyrics. Uh, uh, I always read the lyrics uh, back in the 80s when I still listened to vinyl uh, and music generally. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a great thing to do, have yeah. like a phys physical vinyl with a decent lyrics on the cover and uh, something to watch as well yeah i i, I mean I, I remember growing up and i love doing that having the vinyl you're just yeah. dummy, looking at the picture all the detail on it read and yeah, lyrics, yeah. lyrics i mean there's an experience with that and and then the same with amorphous music every time that i listen to amorphous i feel like i've been on this long trip that's happened thousands of years ago <laughs> yeah 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 well, yeah, well it, it was uh you learned the lyrics by the heart back back then and uh, nowadays i don't know 
the lyrics of the of the albums which I actually like. So that's a kind of problem. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you go see them live, it's not like you can sing along with them. <laughs> yeah. Good ex good example. Yes, yes. No, yeah, I miss I miss those. So when I can, I try to pick up the vinyl. I I mean uh, you know, read the lyrics and, and yeah. be, gather more from that. You understand yeah. uh, what the artist is trying to put forth with the music along with the lyrics, the cover. I mean, yeah. it's all it's all chosen for a reason. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, before we finish up, I mean, we talked, you have the pre-orders, you have the album coming out February 11th. Uh, we get the tour coming up in April. Do you get to be out here for a month in the States? Is there anything else that we haven't covered that you would like to promote? Mm, you mean uh, apart from the album? Yes. Uh, well, just that uh, there's going to be a bunch of uh, festivals, at least in Europe and Finland, next summer. And uh, of course, uh, another tour in the fall, which I cannot reveal yet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope that the touring cycle will last at least three years and we will we'll be able to uh, come over to uh, to the North America again as well but uh, let's see how it goes yeah you never know what's gonna happen these days yeah you get you gotta be flexible but uh, I did see you have a Texas date so I'm, I'm gonna make it out to that so I haven't seen amorphous live every time that I've been unfortunately been missed your previous tours, but I'm not going to miss this one because, like you said, it's, you know, you don't know when the next tour is going to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, if anything, all the fans need to get out there and support these bands, all the bands that are on tour, because you have, I mean, we just had it for, I yeah. mean, a year and a half of lockdown to where there was no touring. So, we have to, fans have to do what they can to support the, the music and, and the bands right now. Yeah. Thank well, you. of course, Ali, again, I appreciate your time. I thank you very much. Thank you for the music that Amorphous is putting out and sticking with it for all these years. So I appreciate it. I'm sure the fans appreciate it. Yeah. And when new album, of course, you know, I've seen some memes uh, of to where it's like people are thinking, uh, how can Amorphous get better? And Amorphous is like, hold my beer. Let me show you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We try, we try, we do our best, always. <laughs> hey, thank uh, you, Rene. I'm running into another interview now. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You yeah, take care. Thank you. Yeah, same to you. See you on tour. All right. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye.